Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the half double crochet ribbed scarf. It's going to be just a super short swatch but I just want to show you. This is my personal scarf that I made and I did three rows of this light gray and three rows of this cream color and I used the Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn. It is super soft yarn um, and I also added fringe on the ends. All of my personal scarves have fringe um, on the ends. Um, so typically for a scarf, you want to make it as long as the person is tall. So you need to find out how tall they are, or you can just eyeball it if you've been crocheting long enough. So you're going to need your yarn. And today I'm going to use the Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn Tweed. I'll, and I absolutely do love this yarn. It's soft and it has all these specks of black and brown. Um, it recommends using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, but for these scarves, I like to drop down half a size to a five millimeter crochet hook. And this is also um, a bamboo handle crochet hook from Hobby Lobby. So you're gonna need your yarn needle for weaving in your ends. I ordered these off of Amazon. And you're gonna need your scissors to cut off those pesky ends that stick out. You're going to need your measuring tape if you're doing a specific size and width. Another little tip for you that I like to do, especially when I have more than one project going on and I have bad memory and I forget what size hook I was using if I put them up. So I take a plastic stitch marker and I just use a Sharpie and I write on the back of it what size hook I'm using and I'll attach it to the project somewhere. Alright, so... By now, I think all of you know how to do a half double crochet. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. So you just, here's how I do mine. I, under these two fingers here and just hold it with my thumb. I wrap around like so. And then I just slip my hook under the first strand, grab that second strand, pull through. And then I grab the working yarn and then just pull it tight. All right, so I'm just gonna chain 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And you want your um, foundation chains to be a little bit loose, and I'm going to show you why. And this is, again, my personal preference, but I think a lot of people do this as well. So, to get started, actually, you're going to go into your second chain from the hook, never counting the loop that's on your hook. But what I like to do is I like to turn it like so, so that you can see these little ridges on the back. And for the foundation row, I like to go into those. So you're going to yarn over. And this is why your foundation chain needs to be a little bit looser. And you're going to go underneath that bar. And you're going to grab your yarn and pull through. Pull up just a hair. And then you've got three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through all three. You're going to do that into the next stitch. Yarn over, go into that underneath that bar, grab your yarn and pull through, make sure it's loose. Yarn over and pull through all three. The next one, yarn over, go underneath that bar, grab your yarn and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three. Next stitch, underneath that bar, grab your yarn and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And you're just going to repeat that all the way down to your very last chain. Sometimes, like you just seen me struggle just a little bit, sometimes when you run into these little pieces, sometimes they can cause just a little bit of a snag. But just be careful with it. Go underneath that bar, grab your yarn, pull it through. Yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, 
felt underneath your bar, grab your yarn, pull it through, yarn over and pull through all three. And I'm just going to go a little bit faster here just so I can get down to the end and not bore you with repeating myself. And like I said earlier, I think most of you pretty much know how to do your stitches. For my personal scarves, I like them to be about eight inches wide and I'm five foot five. I do like them to be just a little bit longer than I am tall. And it's because I like to wrap it around my neck and then I'll loosen it so that it's not really snug against my neck because I'm just, I don't like anything tight against my neck at all. All right, so I'm at the last stitch here. Yarn over, go underneath that bar. Sometimes that last one can be just a little bit tricky. Grab your yarn and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three. So there we have your foundation row. And you'll see the reason why I went into those, I turned my work first and went underneath those uh, ridges on the back is because it gives, let me get this out of there so it'll focus. It gives a nice crisp edge right here. And that's the top of your work. All right, so typically when you're going on to your next row, you will chain two and turn, and then you'll start working in your second chain from the hook. Not in this case. So you're just gonna chain one, turn your work, and you're gonna start in that very first stitch right here. We're not gonna go in here because this is a back loop only. So you're going to yarn over, turn your work, and you see those two bars go in between and go underneath that back bar only. Grab your yarn, pull through, pull up, making sure it's a little bit loose, yarn over and pull through all three. And by doing this, this is what gives that ribbed effect. I think it's beautiful. It's a nice warm scarf uh, without everything being so tight. All right, so there I've done a few stitches here just to kind of show you how it's going to look. All right, so grab yarn over, go in between those two bars there, underneath the back one, grab your yarn and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three. And just keep repeating this all the way down to the end of your row. All right, I'm gonna pause the video, finish my row, and I'll meet back up with you. Okay, so I have just two stitches left. So yarn over, go in between those two, going underneath the back bar only, grab your yarn and pull through. Yarn over, Pull through all three loops. Now on this last stitch, it's totally up to you, but my preference for, because, and the reason why I do this is because it's where I place the fringes. So you can either yarn over and go underneath both bars on that last stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And it gives you this little hole here, okay? That's where I place my fringes. But on mine, I do it in the back bar, or excuse me, the back loop only, because when you do that, it makes that hole bigger. And I can place more strands of yarn there to make the fringe. So again, this that step is just, it's totally up to you. All right, so our second row is complete. And as you can see here, this beautiful ridge. Flip it over, you're not going to see it at first. But once you do another row, you'll see it. Alright, so 
to start your next row, you're going to chain one, not two. You're going to chain one because we're working in that very first stitch right there. So yarn over, go in between the two stitches, underneath the back bar, grab your yarn, pull it through, making sure you pull up just a hair, yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, yarn over, going in between the two and under the back one, grabbing your yarn, pulling it through, yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, in between the two stitches, underneath the back bar, grab your yarn, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. And you're just gonna keep repeating this all the way down. I have made a lot of scarves in this pattern and I'm giving them as gifts. People of course have purchased them and this is the most popular one. All right, working my way down all the way to the end. I'm going a little bit fast here just so I can keep up with you guys. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video, rewind it, whatever you need to do. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comment section. All right, so I'm at my last two stitches here. So I'm gonna yarn over, go in between the two, underneath the back bar, grab my yarn, pull it through, yarn over and pull through all three. And then I'm on my last one. So you can see it a little bit better. And then like I said, when you turn it, you'll be able to see the the ridge. Okay, so we're going to start the next row. Chain one, not two, chain one. Turn your work and we're going to start in this very first stitch right here. So yarn over, go in between the two bars, underneath that back one, grab your yarn and pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. And remember when you're yarning over and pulling, you know, before you pull through, make sure that you tug it a little bit just to give it that height that it's going to need. All right, go in between the two bars here. Hold on. In between these two, and you're going to go underneath this back one. Sorry, I got a little quiet on you. I'm focusing on trying not to mess up. <laughs> okay, so yarn over, go in between the two stitches, go on underneath the back stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. Remember I say give it a little tug. Yarn over and pull through all three. I'm just gonna finish this row kinda slowly for any of you that need me to go a little bit slower. I also wanted to give a mention, my Crystal Waves um, tutorial has well over 10,000 views and I cannot thank you guys enough. When I saw that, I was like, holy, you know what, exclamation point. I could not believe it. But thank you. I mean, I can't do this without you guys at all. All right, so the last two stitches here, you're going to yarn over, go in between the two stitches, underneath that back bar, grab your yarn and pull through, pull up a little bit, grab your yarn and pull through all three. And on my last stitch here. And as you can see, this is how it looks. This is very good for a blanket as well. Um, it would make a nice warm blanket. I just don't have the patience to do this repetitive stitch uh, for that long. All right. 
So here again is the one I made. You can see a lot better the ribbing and then you just flip it over and it's the same. And like I said with this, I, I did use the Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Um, I used cream and I used a super, super light gray. I did three rows of cream, three rows of gray. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the fringes are actually all cream colors, uh, fringes. All right. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. I did a, a short tutorial on the waffle stitch. And I actually made myself a waffle stitch scarf. These work up super fast. Super, super fast. And for this one, I used the Mandala Baby Yarn. And I don't remember what colorway it was because I wasn't even thinking about doing a video at the time. But it has like this beautiful green, like C. And then it goes into a light blue, a light yellow to a more darker yellow to cream to blue to green it's just beautiful and then for the fringes I used all colors instead of just one but I absolutely love this scarf as well very warm and cozy all right again so you're going to need your crochet hook your measuring tape your scissors stitch marker if you need one and then your yarn needle for weaving in your ends most importantly, haha, ha, don't forget your yarn. Anyway, again, my name is Michelle. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it so much. I have, I think, almost 300 subscribers now. Isn't a whole lot, but it is to me. And I do appreciate it so much. You all have a wonderful day.